Okay, in this clip, what we're going to do is look at costs and resources. Now, first of all, over here on the left-hand side, you can see the project view. And underneath the project view, we have got permanent resources, consumer resources, cost centres. And if I just have a look inside the resources here, we've got some example resources, some example consumer resources, and some example costs here. Now, before I talk about this in any more detail, what I want to do is just go into something which is sort of a little known uh, feature of Power Projects, which is called Task Work. There's a predefined table which you'll find here, and uh, Table and then Task Work. So we have this here. Now, the, the reason this is here is so that you can go in and type in a body, an amount of work, uh, work rates, and then it'll work out just how long a task is going to be based on work rates and the amount of work that has to be done. So you don't actually have to go and assign a resource to a task to find this information out, which you do on other software packages. You can just type it into this pre-prepared table and it'll work it out for you. So here we go. There's an example here. So 1,000 units, whatever that is. And let's say we can do 100 meters cubed per day. Okay, and you can see the task is now uh, increased uh, by a small amount there, so it's now two weeks. So if I was going to increase the task work now, and I said that was going to be now 2,000, how much longer would the task be? And the task then increases in size. So by using the table here, you can have it affect the duration of your task until you get to a recognised duration for that particular task. You can then use your reschedule button to work it out and then for it to calculate the critical path through the program and give you your projected new end date further down here based on the information you typed into this table. So that's task work. So that gives you one way of being able to change and affect the duration of tasks without resources assigned. So the next thing we're going to look at then is actually assigning resources and how those work. So what I'm going to do is just change this table back to the default table. Over here on the left hand side then we have our permanent resources. So what I'm going to do is take a bricklayer and assign it across to the task. So bricklayers will be doing walls obviously, so we'll take bricklayers, click and drag and drop them onto walls. Now you can't see the bricklayer first time you've assigned it and that's just because it's currently hidden. So on previous clips you may have seen this, you can go to format and just unhide the resource. It now shows underneath as you can see here. Um, as a secondary line. If I was going to allocate bricklayers to more than one task at a time, I can hold the control button down as I click on walls, roof, and perhaps I'll do some foundations as well up here. I then go across to bricklayers, click and drag and drop onto the tasks, and they show underneath. Now, as to how many bricklayers are working on this task, what I need to do is just add in a new column, as I showed you in a previous clips. So right click, add a column, go down to allocations, Allocation. Table definition pops up for any changes you need to make. There's no changes needed this time. And we can now see how many bricklayers are being used. So I can go in and change that to say five there. We're going to use nine there, four there, three, and two there. Now, of course, you can take other things as well. I'll take that across, put a carpenter onto the roof. So we've now got carpenters and bricklayers on the roof, and essentially you're creating a gang, and there are ways to, to do that, which we're not going to see on this particular clip. Once you've done this and assigned your resources across to your program, you can then, on the View tab at the top, create a new histogram, or put the histogram at the bottom of your program, and with the two drop-downs, you can choose who you want to graph. So we'll open up our site resources, and we'll do our bricklayers, and we'll use our allocation, the availability over allocation. You can see there's a number of graphs which actually, which actually come with the software. So you can choose any of these to see different information. So if you want to see uh, man days, uh, you've got costs, which we'll be looking at shortly, uh, total man days, total man hours. Uh, but the one I'm going to use at the moment is the allocation, availability over allocation. Now I've already set this as a 10 uh, maximum amount of bricklayers that I've got. So I can now see a graph showing just how many bricklayers are being used currently. You can now do various different things, uh, which you would find on a training course uh, as to modelling and, and what have you. One of the things you could do is, on the View tab here, 
Um, on the allocation, beg your pardon, uh, we can go to level your resources. Now again, there's lots of different settings you can choose inside here. It's not a, a case that we're going to go through those today, uh, but we'll go in here, we'll choose bricklayers, um, and we're just going to level that. Uh, quite a little simple example there, uh, but as I said, there's various different settings you can go into as to what you want the project to do with your resource and your task, but just an example there. The next thing I'm going to show you then is costs. So I'll take these particular columns off for a moment. I'm going to hide the resources which are sitting underneath the tasks. Like so. And to put costs onto the uh, tasks, what I would do is, let's close this up here. So to put costs onto the tasks, I'd first of all add in a cost column. And again, on previous clips, we've shown you how to add in new columns. As you can see here, add a new column, cost or income, and then cost. And again, a table definition pops up for you to make changes if necessary. We're not making any changes today. So we can see our cost column here. We open up the costs on the left-hand side. A preset number of costs are here. If I was putting a labour cost onto my piling task, for example, again, a click, drag, drop onto the task, and the money shows on the task. Now, very similar to what happened with the resources, currently the cost is hidden, but if I use my button at the top here under Format, I can unhide it, and there it sits. If I'm allocating to more than one task, we'll just pick a couple of these for examples, allocate labour across, drop onto the task, and then type in the amounts into here. So we said 2,000 on there, and we'll have, and then just change this one here as well. Okay, now similar to what we did with our uh, resources, we can also graph our costs. So same place, up to the view and new histogram, and then down the bottom here, we have our histogram. And from the two drop downs, I can choose my labour cost, and then from, from the graphs which are available here, I can go with a straightforward total cost cash flow, and there's my cash flow running through the program.